from water provision, disaster response, hunger alleviation, education, health care and social upliftment. They kick-started their day in KwaZulu-Natal, giving basic staple items such as bread and milk to homes in various communities. For more on this, we're joined by Dr. Imtia Suleiman, who's the founder of Gift of uh, the Givers. A very good evening to you, Imtia. Th thanks for joining us this evening. Let's just first start with um, your relief efforts on this particular day. Have they been complicated in any way? And I ask this because uh, we understood for some reports suggesting that one of your warehouses was looted. Is this true? Uh, good, uh, good evening to you. No, it's, that's not true. It was a warehouse that was used by us previously. One of the a business volunteer in Port Chepstead on the South Coast used to assist us, and every time there was a problem in the community, he would ask for food parcels or any kind of support. And then we would send it to him, and he would store it in, the, in that warehouse, which is his own warehouse, and distribute it you know, within the next day or two. Unfortunately, in January, himself, his brother, and his father all three succumbed to COVID-19. So as a result, we didn't have that volunteer anymore, and that facility was not being used by us. But because our signage was inside there, people assumed it was a warehouse of ours that was looted. Yes, the warehouse was looted, and it was burnt, but you know we had no supplies in there anymore, and it was not our warehouse. Okay. All right, so Dr. Suman, then tell us a little bit more about uh, the impact of the current looting crisis in South Africa, how that's going to have an impact on demand experienced by gift of the givers. And the demand is huge. You know, somebody put a, a false message yesterday to say we were giving out free food parcels today. Without exaggeration, we must have, I, my phone must have taken over 3,000 calls. They were just ringing all the time. You couldn't answer the phone. And there was, there was almost 2,000 uh, SMS messages with people saying they need food parcels. Yes, some people may be taking a chance, but overall, you can see there's a huge need. The need was there even before you know, the crisis happened. The need was there before COVID-19. It was there during COVID-19. It was there before the current situation, and it's there during the current situation. And you can see that the type of calls that come, come from all strata of society, not only the very poor, it's the middle class, slightly higher class, who've lost their jobs, who've had difficulty. A lot of calls from institutions, old-age homes, orphanages, home for the, you know, abused women, many facilities like that. And just people who say, you know, my neighbors haven't eaten for a few days. So the demand is, is added, it's the situation itself, the economic situation before the situation and the COVID-19, so there's a huge uh, requirement for food parcels and, and food generally in case and in, in, in other parts of the country. Mm. Typically, how does the foundation respond to these calls and how do people get hold of you? Is it a simple case of anybody who feels they need you or is it actual process to follow? Well, everybody does call us as individuals and you know, as people, as institutions, but we don't operate like that. We don't work on individuals. We work with communities and we work, the only place we work uh, like for, it's an institution itself where there's a group of people in there. And otherwise, other, other than that, if people call us from different areas, say and if somebody calls me from a home and say, I, got, I need something in my home. I said, we don't operate like that. You need your, uh, I need a call from the community organization or somebody that's controlling the area to give us proper feedback. We need to vet it. We need to check if there's really the situation if people really need the help. Because the calls are coming from far, from far and wide. It's not like from one area. Like, for example, if you have a flood disaster or a fire disaster, it's restricted to one small area. But now, it's the entire KZN. I mean, two days ago, the uh, Minister of Agriculture, Toko Didiza, called me. And she said, they are worried. There's 29 areas on the North Coast. They don't have a single shop. There's no shop to buy items from. What are the people going to do? Now, that kind of challenges that you have. In addition to the challenges from the different communities, people calling all the time. So what we do is, when we get the calls, we tell the people, all right, which area are you operating from? They will tell us the areas, and we say how many people in that area. They will say this amount of people need food parcels. We will send in our team, somebody who scouts the area, checks, get some kind of feedback. Of course, we can't be 100%. It's impossible to know the situation of every person in every house. But you get a fair idea. And, you know, if you hit a 90% success rate, it's fantastic. You may lose 5 or 10%, but it doesn't really matter. People are in a difficult situation right now. So we try to get, and we work with credible people, credible organizations who have a track record. And of course, the other thing is that we've had a relationship with many, many organizations that we've dealt with. So that makes it a little easier. And then we pack the stuff, take it ourselves, make sure it's distributed ourselves in, 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 in partnership with the people who have called us. Mm. 
What are expectations of where to from here? Because I'd imagine you'd also need your own donors to be able to keep up with your operations, outreach programs. Do you have any fears around drying up of supply there? And would you be able to get to people on time for your part, that which you're doing? We know that there's a national effort through uh, government, but... Do you think you have enough to be able to reach all who are in need? Well, look, for in terms of things drying out, that wouldn't happen. You know, we've got an overwhelming support from the public and from corporates and institutions, organizations, people setting up all types of collection drives. We even got calls from overseas, from South Africans based outside the country, from several countries, all call, all wanting to help. Every single hour, the somebody wants to set up some kind of campaign to assist us. So the support is, is, is incredible. What's the difficult part is the need is too huge. There's just too many people who need assistance. And it's not some small food bank that you're giving. We're trying to give a full, we're well not we're trying, we are doing it right now. We're giving a full food parcel that will last a family of five for a whole month. So they don't need to go to a shop now. Because in Australia, nine days where there's no shop, what do they do after three or four days when the food is finished? So we need to build time for some new structures to be set up and take people, what I call, off the grid. So that's what we're trying to do. But of course, food parcels are expensive. There's transport, purchasing the items, and getting it distributed. We have a standard policy. We can only do as much as we can do. So as much as we can do, we will do and try to help as best we can. In, for individual food parcels for the family, in supporting institutions, and of course, we've been supporting hospitals also, healthcare workers, paramedics, frontline workers, because we're saying that you guys cannot stand in a queue. Right now, there's been a shortage of manpower at hospitals, because of fuel shortage, workers can't, healthcare workers can't get to hospital. Because of security, they can't get to hospital. There's sometimes two nurses in a ward of a whole lot of patients. So we've been providing food packages for hospitals too. So we try to cover a wide spectrum. But to answer your question, the support is good, but any extra support will be helpful. The more support we get, the more people we can help. Thank you so much for speaking to us. All the best to you, Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman, who is founder of A Gift of the Givers. Let's take